Hey everybody, it's Chuck. Going to Costco and gonna have a little bit of a conversation about levels of automation. I just cleaned my windshield with the mist and look, I've already got full self-driving maybe degraded. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Starting off with my unprotected left before we get on the highway to have the conversation. Wide open to the left, it should just go. It's gonna have to go to the median though. And it stopped in a good spot like it always does. It's gonna have to wait a little bit for traffic here. Now this is version 11.4.7.2 and it has been going, oh don't go there. Oh it nudged and then saw it and waited. Okay now it's gonna go. There's a motorcycle in the far right lane and to the middle lane. Now if I were that motorcycle driver that's getting ready to pass me to the right, I would have probably been like, dude, why did you go to the middle lane? Didn't you see me approaching? That's my thought on the middle lane. It just, it's not the closest lane. There were two lanes open, it goes to the middle. Still this version. Hoping that uh, version uh, 12 stops that behavior. Um, but in any case, uh, on the way to Costco, and it's gonna be about a 15 minute drive, and I wanna have a conversation that was recommended by uh, another FSD beta tester um, about levels of automation as compared to uh, my other job where I am an Airbus captain. Um, flying with autopilots, uh, real autopilots in an airplane. And I've talked about this a few times before and they're amazingly similar, uh, which I think also helps me understand how it works, why it works, and then how to use the system uh, as it's designed. Um, and to start off the conversation, when, when pilots go through training, especially in what you call a modern glass cockpit, a glass cockpit is a cockpit uh, or a flight deck that has all LCD displays and no what we call old steam gauges or analog gauges that run off of um, you know more analog signals. Um, so for example, my, my speed indicator is behind is on a screen and it digitally shows me what my airspeed is. It's not measuring it. Uh, necessarily with uh, an anemometer. It's measuring it both with GPS, but there are some um, backups with uh, barometric that are all combined into one system. But the point is, is all of this is automated and you have to be able to look at these uh, displays and gather what they're telling you so that you can manage the automation inside of the flight deck. And that's the first point I wanna make here is modern pilots flying digital glass cockpits are automation managers as well as pilots. And I say they become more true pilots, stick and rudder flying the airplane during emergency situations and during takeoff and landing. Uh, those are kind of the three elements where pilots still sort of get to be pilots, uh, meaning like physically flying the airplane quite a bit. We leave it in automation mostly for passenger comfort in addition to passenger safety and aircraft safety because when the aircraft is in full automation, you're what's called situational awareness or your perception and ability to absorb information becomes broadened. You can take in more information when your brain is not focusing on flying the airplane. If I'm flying an, an older airplane or if I turn all the automation off and I'm doing everything I can to maintain altitude and airspeed, I'm not paying attention to other things as well because my, my focus of attention is concentrated on flying the airplane. Now, that is probably the number one reason why level two ADAS systems and above are safer than just a human driver for that exact same reason. Your brain is able to take in more information while you manage the automation and let the car do what it's good at, the basics, maintaining lane control. Now, I'm gonna go over the levels of automation. Typically we say there's three level, levels of automation, level zero, one, and two. Um, level zero automation is nothing is happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and disengage. I have nothing engaged. I am at level zero of automation right now. I'm driving the car, similar to when I do a takeoff and landing. Uh, and, and now, granted, you can talk about auto throttles, but uh, let's just say you're physically man maintaining the throttle of an aircraft and you're physically maintaining the altitude and its, and its direction. That's level zero. Right now in the Tesla, I'm at level zero. I'm using my accelerator. I'm letting regen braking do some braking, or if I tap the brake, I'm controlling it. I'm the one maintaining the, uh, the road here. Uh, so that's that good example. Now I've actually got to go to a different profile. I'm going to see if this works. I'm going to go to my wife's profile. The seat's going to adjust just a little bit here. Um, but the reason I'm going to this profile is because she does not have FSD in her, um, in her uh, profile. 
So you see I've got the steering wheel right now, and I'm gonna go to level one level of automation. System. If I go down once, and I've got it engaged, this is Traffic Aware Cruise Control. Traffic Aware Cruise Control is level one automation, basically, in the Tesla. I am the one driving the car, so I'm maintaining my directional control, but the Traffic Aware Cruise Control is maintaining the throttle, the acceleration of uh, the car. And I use throttle as an aircraft term and acceleration and deceleration as a term here uh, in the Tesla. So if I'm flying an airplane and something happens that I'm confused about, typically what you do is you level, lower the level of automation. So if I go from level two, which is fully automated, down to level one, perhaps I'm the one steering the plane, maintaining altitude, but I might leave the throttles engaged, so they're the ones maintaining uh, airspeed for me. Um, and that would be one level of automation. So in the Tesla, level zero is you're doing everything. Level one of automation will be traffic aware cruise control. Um, in the uh, cars without FSD, if I go ahead and do two taps, I am now in another level of automation that I'll have to create a little bit of a differentiator between level one and level two. I am now maintaining the lane and the car is driving the speed. So I've bumped up the level of automation to where now I am stuck in the lane. It's gonna maintain it, but what it will not do is take this turn right here. It will not navigate for me. It is going to sort of maintain the lane and the throttle that is selected. Now the important thing to recognize there is this is sort of like a level of automation in, a, in an airplane called altitude hold. And I do need to kind of intervene here because the car is not navigating to get in the correct lane. So altitude hold in an airplane would be like if I was up at flight level 330 and I just want to maintain altitude, you could go altitude hold and the aircraft will maintain that altitude. And if you have the system to support it, it will maintain your airspeed and say you're flying, you know, um, Mach 0 .80, it'll maintain that speed. But what it will not do with altitude hold only on is it will not navigate. It will not go between waypoints. It will not follow your flight plan. That is what um, auto steer is like in the Tesla. Now, my wife has uh, Navigator and Autopilot in her profile, and when you go from two lanes to one lane, you're on Navigator and Autopilot, which is sort of like level two automation. It is maintaining two axes of control in addition to the throttles. It is both navigating, taking interchanges, it is maintaining the speed, and it is also maintaining your lane or perhaps changing the lane and navigating. And that would be the same as the full level of automation on an autopilot where I've got it following my flight plan, I've got it maintaining my speed, and at the same time, it's maintaining my selected altitude that I have chosen so that it is uh, going to go ahead and navigate. Now, I hope that makes some good sense. Now, I'm going to go ahead and change back to my profile um, because really, navigate on autopilot and FSD are actually no different except for their ODDs or their operational design domains, right? Navigator and autopilot will navigate, it will maintain lanes as appropriate except for in between lane changes, and it will maintain speed, but its operational design domain is only on the highway. Whereas FSD broadens that operational design domain into city streets. So it essentially broadens it to everywhere except for parking lots and garages and, and the, the situations where we know FSD currently is not functional. So the operational design domain arguably has some parallels to aviation also, whether or not the certain systems can be engaged. Uh, you know, in, in perhaps some general aviation aircraft, the autopilot will be fully functional um, in certain environments, but not all environments. Uh, sometimes aircraft do not like certain systems to be engaged too low. Or in some modern aircraft, certain other systems become effective when you're very low. Your radar altimeter gives you some warnings and threats around terrain. 
So anyway, that is just a quick conversation I wanted to have at the request of another FSD beta tester about parallels from aviation into uh, the automation that's being put into uh, the autopilot system in the Tesla. Levels of automation. Now, one of the important things that we also remember to teach pilots, if something is going on, lower the level of automation in order to ensure safety. If I don't understand what the car is doing, why it's changing lanes, lower the level of automation. Disengage the system, re-engage a lower level, take over. That's the first thing you ever wanna do. In aviation, there's an old saying that says, aviate, navigate, and communicate, and only in that order. Whenever you're in an airplane, your number one priority is to fly the airplane. Aviate, navigate, where am I going? That is below the priority of aviating. So navigation, can always be solved after you're flying the airplane. If you miss a turn, if you miss an altitude, if you're going too fast, that is not going to kill you most situations. Flying the plane could. And then communicate. That's talk outside the aircraft. That's something we don't necessarily have to do inside of a car with automations. Communicate to both air traffic control, the ground systems, your passengers, and your other crew members are all important. Worrying about telling them what happened is the lowest priority of those three. So. Just something to remember as you're perhaps out there driving FSD, if the car is doing something that you don't understand, lower the level of automation, figure out what's going on, and then as the situation becomes under control again, increase the level of automation back to your comfort level. Anyway, quick chat about FSD, levels of automation, and how uh, the Tesla and modern aircraft are very, very similar in many ways. I hopefully you enjoyed this conversation. Um, I think it was a fun one, and uh, if you got any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll talk about it. Have a great day, everybody.